James Swanick here. How are you doing? It's the first day of July in 2021. Can't believe that it. it's the second half of the year. You're just about to listen to an interview I did a few minutes ago with Robert and Roxana Sosa, who are attorneys in San Antonio, Texas. They're a husband and wife team who are now 90, 90 plus days alcohol free. We talked about the challenges that they had uh, with drinking before they joined our 90 day program. They talked about uh, challenges they uh, faced during the program and now what they're planning on doing in the future in regards to their drinking. I'll let them share their story, but suffice to say that they lost a little bit of weight and some people have been noticing they look pretty damn good as well, which is incredible. Uh, just a couple of things. I'm actually in Bali, Indonesia at the moment as I'm recording this and decided to experiment a little bit with uh, running a sponsorship of this show. The sponsor of the show or the sponsors of the show are actually my own businesses, my own companies. <laughs> so you probably listen to other podcasts and they say, oh, before we get into the show, I want to thank our sponsor and then they go into a, a big spiel. So I'm going to do something similar, try it out, see see whether it resonates with you and give me some feedback whether you want to hear this uh, ongoing or not. But I I will only, you know, talk about products that I, that I, but A, sorry, let me, that was a bit of a tongue twister, that I use uh, and that I feel will serve you. So today's episode is sponsored by my new supplements company, which is called Swan Vitality. You can check it out at swanvitality.com. I have uh, a product called uh, Loving Liver, which is designed to uh, help your body process or clean up your, your liver, which has probably had a lot of damage if, if you're a regular drinker. I've got a green supplement there and a magnesium, which uh, helps you to fall asleep at night, helps you relax. Uh, so there you go. That wasn't a perfectly scripted <laughs> advertisement, was it? I wasn't reading off an auto cue or from notes that I had prepared. Uh, so yeah, check that out, swanvitality.com. And the other sponsor of the show is uh, the Positive Shift Journal. And this is a journal that I have my Project 90 clients do during their their alcohol-free experience. Uh, the website is positiveshiftjournal.com. And I've designed uh, the inside of it with a bunch of questions, uh, which are designed to help you process your thoughts and emotions. So if you're someone who has a bit of a scatterbrain, you overthink things, you're constantly going, looking at pros and cons, you don't have clarity, and you just want to be able to get your thoughts down on a piece of paper and get a little bit of structure to them, and then definitely check out Positive Shift Journal. I've interviewed dozens of neuroscientists over the years, and I've designed the questions in a way that supports what those neuroscientists have shared with me um, that helps promote happiness, stress reduction, and an overall feeling of fulfillment. So if journaling is something that you'd like to explore, or you've already, or you sorry, you already know the benefits of it. Go to positiveshiftjournal.com and grab yourself a journal. There you go. That was it. That's my sponsorship. <laughs> it wasn't particularly polished, but uh, let's see. Let's get into it, shall we? This is Robert and Roxana Souza celebrating 91 and 92 days alcohol free. Here we go. Hello again, I am James Swanick, and welcome to another episode of the Alcohol-Free Lifestyle Podcast. And today we're talking to husband and wife team, Robert and Roxana Souza, who are attorneys in San Antonio, Texas. And Robert is 91 days alcohol-free as we're recording this. And Roxana is 92 days alcohol-free as we're recording this. First of all, Robert and Roxana, Congratulations. How do you how are you guys feeling on days 92 and 91 alcohol free? Feeling great. Feeling great. Really good. Well, come on, let's be a little bit more <laughs> <laughs> amazing. How's that? Amazing. <laughs> so tell us a little bit about you guys. Like you guys are in San Antonio, Texas, your attorneys. Just tell us a little bit about your life and what was going on with your drinking habits before you embarked on an alcohol free journey. Um, we, uh, we met in law school. We've been, um, together for, uh, 30 years now. Um, and, uh, pandemic really closed us into a pretty tight space for a while, long while as it did most everybody else. And during that time, we, uh, started paying a lot more attention to our lifestyle, our habits, 
and felt that um, becoming alcohol free was something we needed to do for our health. Uh, and uh, as we you know, take care of our parents, we realized, look, we're going to be there someday soon. We want to we want to make some investments now in our health so that when we get to that age, we uh, can be the best that we can be at that at that point in time. Mm. So what made you feel like your uh, health was being compromised to the point where you felt like you needed to take action in regards to alcohol? For me, it was uh, an inability to, to lose weight, even though I was exercising on a regular basis as I looked at my diet. Um it was not being able to, on days that I drank, get up early in the morning the way I would like to with, uh, with uh, enthusiasm, you know. And um, I was uh, really concerned about, about my health uh, as I got older. My, my uh, parent, uh, my father is having some health issues right now, and I, it really focused me in on, on what I could do at this phase of my life um, to to be healthier when I'm older. Mm. And Roxana, what, what did you identify that was going on with your health that made you want to embark on at least 90 days alcohol free? Well, I wanted to be more healthy. I think, I think one of the things I, I love is that it's a lifestyle change. Um, I want to be, I want to eat better and I want to, and, and part of that is cutting out some sugars and alcohol has a lot of sugars. Uh, my mom was diabetic, and I don't want to go down that same route. So um, it was really important for both of us to do this together. Um, we supported each other, so this has been a great journey for both of us. Yeah. I want to ask you about that in a second, you know, being a, a couple, husband and wife team doing it together, because a lot of clients or, or people who are curious about doing this alcohol-free journey don't feel supported by their partner. Um, because one, you know, sometimes their partner wants to keep drinking and the other one doesn't. We'll get to that in a second. Um, what what were you both drinking? Was it wine, red wine, white wine, vodka, beer? What were you what were your drinking habits? Red wine. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> to be honest, red wine. Yeah, um, I would have cocktails as well. So I'd usually have a cocktail before dinner, um, and then I drink wine with dinner. Yeah. So was it a couple couple glasses of red wine each night? Were you guys sharing a bottle, bottle and a half, half a bottle? What was your what was your consumption like at the time? Well, a bottle easily. Sometimes we'd open up another one, uh, but but certainly we'd would drink a bottle a night together. Yeah, yeah, and that's you know that's pretty societally acceptable, right? Like I remember when I was when I was drinking, I would drink almost a bottle of wine most weeknights if I was staying in. I remember watching reruns of the TV series of The West Wing on NBC or something back in the, the mid-2000s, and I would buy, I, I would open a bottle of Two Buck Chuck, which is like Charles Shaw, which is like a $2 bottle of wine. And most nights if I was watching that TV show, I'd, you know, I'd knock off three quarters of a bottle. I never really got drunk or tipsy. I was just, you know, I was pacing myself. And that wasn't really a big deal. Like no one would ever say, oh, wow, you got a drinking problem. It was just... I think it's what most, you know, many people, let's say, probably share a bottle or a bottle and a bit per night. Would, would you say that's pretty normal? Well, you know, it's interesting since, since we've been doing this, I look at TV and I'm amazed that every time I look at the TV, somebody has a glass of wine in their hands or they, they're going out for, for drinks after work on the show. And it's, it's so prevalent everywhere. It's, it was eye-opening to me. You know, I think that when we uh, get together with others and you're in a uh, kind of social setting, uh, you tend to lose track about how much you're drinking. Uh, and so uh, I don't know if, you know, a bottle or a little bit more is, you know, what is what normally consumed. I think that when we're in that kind of setting with other people and you, you kind of lose track, and I'm sure that we consume more than a bottle when when you look at it in, in that in that way. Um, so one of the things about the program that I really liked was it armed us to be able to be in those settings and and say no, you know I'm not drinking. I'll I'll have some water. I'll have something else, um, a mocktail maybe. Um, and so it was uh, it was really helpful for me to at least be armed 
and ready for those settings because those are the settings that really make it more difficult for you to abstain from alcohol when you're with other people. And so it was those, that knowledge, those skills that we learned uh, visiting with others that I think were, were most helpful to me. Um, and because mm. there is a, a pressure to, to consume alcohol when you're with others, especially in a, in a social setting. And, you know, we have a lot of friends who, who enjoy drinking. We were at dinner just uh, this weekend with uh, friends we hadn't seen since the pandemic began, and they are uh, love to drink and are connoisseurs of all sorts of wines and uh, mm. spirits and food. And uh, so they were very surprised, uh, that one, that we, you know, weren't, weren't drinking with them. Uh, but too, they, they were surprised by how, you know, we looked, we, we looked different, uh, to them. Uh, they couldn't quite put their finger on it, but, uh, we knew what it was. Well, and just to, to, to touch on what Robert was saying about social events. I remember going to events with him where you have a glass of wine and you haven't even finished it. And somebody's coming and pouring more into your glass before you've even finished it. And so I, I don't know how you're able to keep track of that because they keep coming. And I, I just... It's scary when you think about it. Yeah. Yeah, it's like a bottomless glass, isn't it? Yes. Someone just keeps pouring it up. When you said that they noticed there was something different, what, what did they say? Like, what, what, what did they say that they noticed? Well, they um, asked if I'd lost weight um, and, uh, and just couldn't put their, quite, quite put their finger on it. But, you know, I feel like, I feel like my face has shrunk a little bit. <laughs> so, uh, uh, and I have lost weight, but but I had I don't think the weight has been dramatic. But it's interesting. It even in the office when I've gone in after not being there for a while, people are are noticing some change. And again, they can't really put their finger on it, so they always just ask if I've lost a lot of weight. Mm. Yeah, well, it's um, it's a very common. Uh, experience that people have when they go a few months without alcohol, what actually happens or tends to happen is that the toxins that have been living on your skin have, have been removed. And so think about it. If you're a consistent drinker, you're walking around carrying those toxins in your skin and your body's largest organ is your skin. And when you, when you, drink, when you drink alcohol, it dehydrates your, your body's largest organ, your skin. And so your, your skin is kind of looks a little bit more weathered, let's say, a little bit dry. Um, in fact, there was a study out of the UK some years ago that, that said that people who didn't drink had 30% uh, less visible signs of wrinkles and crow's feet around, around their eyes compared to those who did drink. Um, combination of A, toxins in the skin, dehydrated skin, and then also compromised sleep. Because even if you're, even if you, sleep seven or eight hours after a couple drinks, uh, the quality of that sleep is still compromised because your body's trying to break down the toxins from the, from the alcohol. So it's actually working. It's not getting into that deep restorative phase. So I'm not surprised that people uh, express surprise at how good you both looked because that's a very common common thing. Ro Roxana, I think you said someone who, who you hadn't seen in a few months commented on your appearance also, correct? Yes. So uh, we, we get our house uh, pest controlled every three months. And I guess she must have come right when we were about to start or had just started. And she was just here not too long ago. And she asked me, you've lost weight. And I said, well, I can't tell because you see yourself every day. So I'm like, well, I guess. And she said, no, you look younger. You look, she goes, what are you doing? You look, you look younger than you have. And, 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 it, and it came to our realization that, that it's been that three months that I've been off this program. I mean, I've been on this program that it's been the three months. Mm. So um, it, that made me feel very good because we, I haven't really seen a lot of people because of this pandemic. And so for her to say that made me feel very, very good. Mm. Just for context for the listeners, well, uh, Robin and Roxana just completed our Project 90 experience, which is 90 days uh, alcohol-free with our coaches and our community and some accountability and some fun. I hope, hope you found it fun at, at times as well. Um, yeah, and so anyone else notice anything? Any family members notice anything or 
compliment you on the fact that you were doing this or make fun of you for doing this or lament the fact that you're doing this? I don't know if they made fun of us. They were, they were questioning why we were. It's real interesting. Um, I think society just expects everybody to drink. And so when you don't drink, people look at you kind of like, what's wrong? And why aren't you? And and I I have told people that it's because I choose not to drink. They were like, oh, no, you can't drink right now because you're in your 90 days. And I said, no, I choose not to drink. I'm choosing this. This is not I, I can drink if I want to, but I'm choosing not to do it. So um, for myself, you know, this is this is making my lifestyle better, making me more energetic. You know, um, Life is finite, so I want to enjoy it while I have it. Mm. Um, I think people in our family circle are asking, you know, what's going to happen after 90 days? Let's go party after 90 <laughs> days. So let's celebrate by going out. Uh, and uh, and I guess, you know, the, the message to them is, look, this is part of trying to be intentional about mm-hmm. uh, about what we consume, about what how we feel, uh, our mental state, it's, it, it, there is a point in time when a habit like drinking takes over and it's not intentional. It's not volitional anymore. It's just something that you do. And so it was, it it was a break with that habit, that, uh, frame of mind that I think was most helpful. Um, that ability to, to be intentional about what, what we consume and how we feel. Well, and I think it's like what you said early on. When, so we know what it's like to drink. We wanted to see what it was like not to drink. And I actually, I like not drinking much better than I like drinking. But I wouldn't have known that had I not done this. And Robert? Um, I, I agree. I think that, that uh, my ability to think for longer periods of time and my health, I really think I'm probably in the best shape I've ever been in my life. And it, I didn't realize how important diet is. Exercise isn't enough. And uh, I mean, I exercised every single day before I got on this program. And so it wasn't that this program made me exercise more. It just added to what I was already doing in a way that really um, uh, helped me get in much better shape cardiovascularly and strength wise. And um, and uh, the, the percentage of body fat has dropped uh, considerably. Um, so not only made me pay more attention to uh, what I was drinking, but also what I was eating. So it, it, once you start thinking about what you consume, it starts your focus starts expanding into other areas of what you consume. Um, you become a lot more intentional. Which one of you uh, was encouraging the other to participate in Project 90 and do the coaching with me and w- with our team? Like, Which one of you was like, hey, let me... I think we should do this. Who was the first one on board? Well, it was interesting. It was like uh, ping pong. So one of us would would be pushing the other, and then and then when when uh, the other lost enthusiasm, the other one would 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 pick 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 it back up again. Roxana, I think I was probably a little bit more uh, with the the idea of doing something like this together initially. But once we got started, Roxana was a lot more. Uh, involved. Um, she participated a lot more in the um, the calls uh, than I did, but encouraged me and I attended. Uh, everyone I attended, I attended with her. Uh, and then she would come back and keep me up to date on people and stories. And uh, so I think that once we got in the program, uh, Roxana was certainly much more of a leader uh, for us uh, than I was. Mm. So do you think that if you would you had gone through it yourself, Robert, is there a part of you that thinks maybe you wouldn't have made it? Like you, maybe you would have drunk at some point during the 90 days and so you feel like you couldn't have done it without Roxana or do you feel like you could have done it? I, I really don't think I could have done it without her. I really don't think that I could have. I think that the um, uh, for, for both of us to go into a, a setting, a social setting, um, 
it it just I needed that support. I needed someone else to be with me in that on that journey, uh, and so it, it helped me a lot. We went through two graduations <laughs> to, uh, during this ninety days of two, two of our uh, and children birthdays. And, and birthdays. birthdays. And, yeah, so we went through. Uh, we we had a lot of uh, uh, gatherings and yeah. celebrations where uh, everybody was was drinking and champagne and celebration. You know, alcohol tends to to be something that is part of those kinds of celebrations, and so it, it was. Uh, we, we we probably picked the, the, not the best, but maybe the best time to do this because it put us through a, a trial by fire, if you will. Yeah. And Roxana, did you feel that you needed Robert in order to accomplish this, or do you feel like you could have done it on your own? Well, he actually, um, he's the one that got us started in this, and, and uh, I, I am grateful for that. Uh, could I have done it on my own? I, I think... I probably could have, but it would have been it would have been more difficult. It really was a great help for him to be involved in this, and 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 I guess I see it as a journey in our relationship. This is this is another journey that step that we've taken, and and I'm glad we did it together. Um, I think it's made us stronger because we we cleared this hurdle together. Mm. So when you say you feel like it's made you stronger because you've cleared this hurdle together. Was there some kind of irritation or was there something missing in, in your relationship before you did this and that now that's been resolved or is, has it actually heightened the connection or has it cleared up any leaky energy? Like, like how has the relationship changed? Well, I, can, I can honestly say that really when we, when we were talking about when did we drink, I didn't really drink for because I was anxious, I drank more to celebrate or some accomplishment or, you know, even if I just mowed the, the yard because we have a big yard, I, you know, have a beer. But um, it was more, we, we got along really well even when we drank. So, um, but I think that what it has done is I can have fun. It, it's like when I can have fun without drinking with him. And, and, and I guess I didn't really realize that until we stopped. And it's 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 like when we used to take trips with our kids, we'd have we always have our kids with us. We have four children, and we'd always have our children with us. And then, and one time, I guess on our twenty fifth anniversary, we went to to Europe without them. And I was really worried because we'd never really been alone that long, you know, for two weeks together by ourselves. Uh, and so I was a little bit concerned and then we got back and we had a great time on this trip and we got back and I told my kids, I don't need y'all to come with us anymore. We have a great time together. We don't need y'all. And they were just like, uh, and it's kind of the same thing. We don't need alcohol to have fun. We have fun together. So that's been really enlightening and very, and it's made me very happy to know that. Mm. You know, the, the biggest improvement in our relationship has been that we wake up super early in the morning. <laughs> we get so much more done. I mean, it also means we get to bed a lot sooner. Uh, so I have to turn off my phone because people now think they can still talk to me at 10 o'clock at night. Well, at 10 o'clock at night, I'm, I'm pretty much asleep now. So our, our day has changed. We're, we're up by five, five thirty in the morning. Uh, it gives us more time to talk and connect and look at our calendars and plan. Mm -hmm. Um, and, um, and so that's been a really big, a really big help. Mm. For the benefit of um, our listeners who may be not quite sure what Project 90 is, could you just maybe just matter of factly just explain what, what your perception of it is now that you've gone through that? And you don't need to talk it up and say how wonderful it is. I already know how wonderful it is. <laughs> but, but maybe just matter of factly just tell our listener, you know, what happens when you when you go through this experience with us, the the sharing that occurs when you uh, get together on the calls and learn that uh, that many of the things that you feel, many of the assumptions that you've made about about drinking um, are shared. Are are there's a, a commonality here that helps you identify, that helps you learn more. About about yourself, about this uh, societal pressure to drink, uh, how it becomes a habit, uh, and how the habit can uh, grow. Uh, basically, it is a progressive 
habit that gets that can get worse and gets worse for some people. And um, I think there are times in my life where it's gotten worse for me. That there are times where uh, I used it as a crutch that um, was not helpful, not positive. And hearing the stories that people tell about um, you know, the, the, the good things that alcohol brought for them in some parts of their lives as they look back, uh, and, and can look back on it, but, but, uh, you know, or at least they, they, they think back on it and think those were good times. Um, and, uh, and then, and then how it, they get to the point where they feel like, um, uh, I need to, I need to change this and, and the challenges that they face and the, the way they face the challenges, and the temptations, it's, it may be different than the way uh, I do, but uh, but it's helpful to learn them, uh, to learn from their experiences. It um, does provide context for um, the the journey, for the struggle to to become intentional about about what you consume. Mm. Roxana, how would you describe the experience? You know, what? Well, I can honestly say that when he first told me about it, I was very apprehensive. I, I, I'm sure you remember. I don't know if I spoke with you. I know I spoke with Victoria, and she was she she even tells me that I was I was so short in my my answers to her questions. I was very not short in in, in an ugly way, but just not wanting to. Um, speak a lot about what was going on or just talk about it but I have to say that I I made a point since we agreed to do this that I was going to make a commitment to it and so I tried to participate in as many calls as I possibly could and I thought these were very beneficial it's nice to know you're not alone and a lot of times I, I think I felt I was alone in this in this drinking pattern that I was in that I was the only one in it and not that I want other people to be in it but it's but we buttressed each other. We helped each other in these calls. And, 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 and it was nice to have people from all over, all over in these calls. And um, we, I, you know, and I, I can name you the people that were on there with me and I, and the people, the same people that came on and I, I would see them and I saw the, their journey and I hope I can continue seeing their journey because it's 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 so wonderful to see the change and and um, to recognize that change and so I'm I'm really glad that I participated. Um, I am going to miss those calls. I'm not going to lie, um, but they were they were they were wonderful. Mm. Yeah, you were apprehensive about joining, and and you had also expressed to me you were a little apprehensive about doing this interview as well, weren't you? Um, what why do you think? Why do you think you feel you felt that apprehension at the beginning? And why do you feel that you feel that apprehension now about, you know, sharing the, the story, I guess, publicly? You know, I think there is a um, kind of a shame that is associated with recognizing that you want to change something in your life. Because uh, if you want to change something, then it must mean you've got a problem. <laughs> That means you must you must have something wrong with you. You must have something that needs fixing, um, and so it's that uh, it's that almost admission um, that you're making by uh, needing a program and getting on a program and staying on a program, and then and then afterwards uh, talking about why you needed to get on a program, and so it, it was. Uh, certainly that was my thinking before I began the program. And then, and then it, it dawns on you, I think, uh, if, uh, or it did, did, it did me at least, that, that this is something that um, becomes a habit, and it's a habit that is not easy to break. Most habits are not easy to break, but this one in particular, because it comes with societal pressures, it comes with pressures that... Um, that really you've created in your own environment by the people that you've hung out with and what you did with them when you were with them. So it, it, you know, you're changing not just yourself, but you're changing your environment when you make this decision and you need help. Uh, you need tools to be able to do that because when your environment is pushing you to do, uh, you know, to drink, um, even if you yourself have made a decision that you're going to be more intentional about what you're going to consume and that you're not going to drink anymore, 
um, you know, that may not be enough. It, you, you, you need um, some grounding. Um, you need some support to be able to withstand the push that you're going to be facing from those people that you um, that you love, that you want to still be with, but be with in a different way. Hmm. And Roxana, do you feel apprehensive about putting yourself out there and sharing that you've quit oh, drinking? Oh, you know, tonight? you know, I did, James. You know, I did. <laughs> uh, yeah, I did. I, 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 and I'm still very apprehensive about this because I don't do social media, and and so that was. I don't do any of that stuff. And so um, it was very difficult until you asked Robert and Robert said, you know, his confidence and in, in his, when he told you, yes, I'll do it right away. When he said right away to you, I'll do it. And his confidence and his surety in himself, it kind of spilled over to me. And I thought, you know what? You're right. We have nothing to be ashamed of. We've, we have done something that's really great. And I hope to continue doing it. And and uh, I know that a lot of people on the call, that, that the calls that I've been on, ask, what am I going to do after 90 days? And I said, well, I don't know. I said, I, I what I do know is I'm going to try and live in the present. I can't change what's I've, what I've done in the past. I can't change it no matter how much I would love to. And I don't know what the future holds. All I know is what today holds. And this is what I'm going to work on. And just like he's talking about, Intent, being intentional, I'm going to be, try and be intentional in this present time. And that's all I can do. Yeah, well said. And I, I get your resistance to putting yourself out there because isn't it interesting that someone choosing to live a healthier life by declining alcohol or by saying no to alcohol and just, you know, living an alcohol-free life, isn't it interesting that we feel apprehensive about sharing that because society has normalized the drinking culture just so much to the point where you, Robert, and, and you, Roxana, are kind of, oh, I'm not sure I really want to talk about this publicly. As Robert talked about, there's the shame. And then, you know, Roxana, you're talking about you don't do social media. It's like putting your name out there and saying, hey, I actually am living an alcohol-free lifestyle at the moment. That that feels kind of awkward, doesn't it? I get it. It does, yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah. I can see it. I can see it in your bodies. You're like, this is awkward. <laughs> well, but you're you doing know, so I, I know that in some of our calls, it, it's it's really interesting when we were talking about it. It's almost as if you, you're more ashamed that you're not drinking than you are drinking. I mean, and, and, and some of the t things that we would say, I, I would think to myself, why, why is that the norm? That doesn't make any sense to me at all. Some of the things we would say, it's like, it's not normal to drink, but yet it's, it's considered normal. So, you know, it's like when you go to a restaurant and you ask for a mocktail and they look at you kind of like, what? Like, you know, no <laughs> alcohol. And they're like, somehow you're this anomaly that's all of a sudden come into their establishment and. I'm not quite yeah. sure what to do with you. <laughs> I had one of my one of my sons graduated from college in at, in New Orleans, and I went into a bar with him, and I ordered a non-alcoholic beer. They had a non-alcoholic beer. The, the bartender kicked me out of the bar just for asking for a non-alcoholic beer. He was so offended. <laughs> wow! Wow! Well. All of the statistics and all the studies show that this is changing. Like there is a there is a tidal wave of change that is happening around people's perception of alcohol in their life and, and alcohol's place in, in, in their lives. So um, both of you represent a very small percentage of the population who will ever do 90 consecutive days alcohol-free and will ever look at this, but that small percentage is getting bigger. It's getting larger. So. Uh, I so acknowledge both of you for your commitment to your health and to your family and to um, your lives for embarking upon this. And I, I want to be clear too to the podcast listener, it's not a requirement that once you go through the 90 days that you subject yourself to being interviewed on the podcast by me. <laughs> <laughs> I, I simply invite graduating members uh, to be interviewed by me on the podcast. And if, if people are perfectly free to politely decline, and that's absolutely no problem. There's no pressure. 
I just simply invite them and folks either say yes or they say, oh, I don't know, and then they say yes <laughs> or, or it's a very firm no. Um, what I what I did share with, with both of you before you both agreed to do this interview was that I, that I felt that you sharing your story as a husband and wife team uh, would inspire uh, husband and wife teams out there who might be listening. It might inspire the husband, it might inspire the wife, maybe if, even if they're not married, maybe it's just a romantic relationship um, and partners. You might be a woman or a man right now listening to this and going, you know, I want to do this and I feel like I need to do it with the support of my partner. Uh, and if that is you, have them listen to this episode. Have them listen to Robert and Roxana talk about their experience and then reach out to us if this is something that that you want to do. What would you guys say to someone who maybe doesn't feel like they have the support of their partner and would like it? Is there any advice you might offer to them? Well, um, I think having the discussion, there was a lot of talking before we we jumped into the program and, and we, we talked about what we wanted to accomplish, what we thought might be obstacles to what we wanted to do. And I think that in that way, we encouraged each other and we, we talked about what we wanted to do. And then, and then we went looking for, for how we're, how we're going to do it. And so that's when I, I ran into your podcast and, um, I learned a little bit more about the different support groups that are out there. And then we started talking about it. And so it was a process. Uh, and then once we jumped into the program, it was nice to be able to sit down and share what we were feeling or the challenges we had uh, that day or uh, what happened when we were in a social setting and didn't, didn't drink. And, um, and to have someone to share that with really helps a lot. It helps uh, in the process, but it also helps in the growth that occurs as you're going through that program. Mm. But, but I would say you can do it even if, uh, you can still do it by yourself if you if you want. And I, I think really once you get past maybe even a week or two, it's amazing how quickly the time goes by. Before I knew it, we were all in 80 days and I didn't know how we got there because it went by so fast. It, it goes slowly in the beginning and then all of a sudden, boom, you're gone, you're done. And so I think it can be done. It may be a little bit more difficult, but the wonderful thing is you have a support group out there. You have those calls you can get on. You have, I mean, if you need to talk to somebody, you can, you can reach out to any of the individuals or everybody seems very open to, to, to talking. So you're not alone. Even if you may do the journey alone, you're not alone. Did, did either of you or both of you discuss doing an alternative program, whether it be something like an, like AA or a church group or outpatient or inpatient or just holding each other accountable or just, you know, making a declaration? Like what were some of the alternative things that you were discussing before you decided on doing Project 90? Well, we uh, we read uh, a number of books. There's a, a 30 day sobriety book that's pretty good, and so uh, we were reading that uh, and talking about the the. It was a, like you had a chapter a day for the 30 days that that the book took you through, um, and then um, I was researching on the internet, which is kind of how I I ran into your program. Um, and and thought that something a little more immersive than just reading a chapter in a book would be would be helpful, um, because we really wanted to we wanted to make the investment of time and effort, and felt that with some support it would be um, more successful. And mm. and I'll be honest, I I what really sold me on this was was the whole lifestyle change, because to me if if you can cut out alcohol and still eat horribly and be, I mean, not exercise and, and you're not doing anything to help your lifestyle change. And I, I really like the fact that it didn't focus just on alcohol. It's focused on your whole lifestyle, your mindset. Um, and that was very important to me because it is a lifestyle change, but it's a lifestyle for all of the, your entire, your, your, your mind, your body and your spirit. So, and I think somebody said that uh, on one of the, uh, in the meetings, that it's your mind, body, and spirit, and I truly believe that. Mm. 
Wonderful. Well, Robert and Roxana, congratulations again, and thank you for sharing your journey with us and with our with our listeners here today. Uh, just a final question, uh, Roxana, you kind of touched on how you're viewing the you know the future, that being a day at a time. But let me let me pose the question to Robert because I know Robert, you'd expressed a little bit of uncertainty as to whether this is going to be a lifelong thing. Um, do you want to just share a little bit about what you're thinking about the place alcohol has in your life in the coming months and the coming years? You know, I'm, I'm um, in the second half of, of well into the second half of my career and my life. And so I'm at the point in time where I'm thinking, all right, what am I going to do with the next 10 or 15 years of, of my life? And what do I want to focus on? And one of the things that um, I believed and still believe uh, is that alcohol was an impediment to my being the best person that I could be and being the kind of person that would achieve the kinds of things I want to achieve in this probably last third of my of my career. And, um, and so I think that having overcome this habit uh, has now focused me on other habits that I want to, uh, to that I know I can change now. <laughs> you know, I, know I, I can now identify uh, habits of uh, behavior uh, that may be impediments to my wanting to achieve the success that I want to achieve in the different areas that I've now identified and been very intentional about. And so it, it has given me some strength that I'm carrying to other areas. Um, now, does that mean I won't ever drink again? You know, I, I don't know at this point in time. I, I, I know that it's um, going to be there, that, that the temptation to drink is going to be there, that the societal pressures to drink are going to be there. Um, but I also know how I feel when I don't drink. I also know that mm-hmm. I have got, I'm borrowing happiness when I drink. I'm borrowing happiness from tomorrow, <laughs> you know. <laughs> so, you know, I and, and you know, it, I guess at some point, if I intentionally decide I'm going to borrow some happiness from tomorrow morning, I guess I I can make that decision. But that's that's different than taking a drink without thinking about it. You know, it's it's different than the mindset I had before this program. It was it was I wasn't thinking about tomorrow morning. I wasn't thinking about what, how much I was going to weigh, how I was going to feel. Uh, what it was going to do to my uh, mental state in the morning. It, it just wasn't a thought that, that occurred to me. Now now it is. Uh, uh, I think that that, that will, uh, in the future, mean I will, if I drink, will drink much less. Uh, but at this point in time, I've, I've got no immediate plans to begin drinking anytime soon. Uh, my plans are to use the muscles I've grown in this program to, to try to, try to uh, meet other challenges that I have in my life. Wonderful. Robert and Roxana, attorneys from San Antonio, Texas, on days 92 and 91. Congratulations again, and thank you so much again for sharing your experience and your, your journey and wishing you both continued great health into the future. Thanks, thank James. You. Thank you. Thanks for listening to the Alcohol Free Lifestyle Podcast. I want to load you up with some free stuff right now. So if you want to go to jameswanick.com slash guide, I will send you my Quit Alcohol Guide, which has helped six-figure entrepreneurs and top professionals reduce or quit drinking. You can also text the word quit guide to the number 44222 if you're in the US, of course. It doesn't really work anywhere outside of the US. But if you're in the US on your mobile phone and you'd like that guide, text the word quit guide to the number 44222 or you can go to jameswanick.com slash guide. If you'd like to schedule a free 15-minute call with one of my top coaches, just an exploratory call to see if or how we can help you, then you can go to jameswanick.com slash schedule, or you can text the word project90 to the number 44222 if you're listening in the US on a mobile phone. That's jameswanick.com slash schedule, or you can text the word project90, that's one word, project90, to the number 44222. Feel free to send me a direct message over on my Instagram account, which is at James Swanick. You can also watch video episodes of this podcast and a series of other educational videos on my YouTube channel, which is James Swanick One. 
or you can direct message me on Facebook at James Swanick Official. And finally, a request. Would you please now write a short review of the podcast inside of the Apple Podcast app on your phone or on iTunes on your desktop computer? Would you please give the show five stars and write a quick one or two sentence review? This will help the show get in front of even more listeners, potentially transforming someone's life. You can rate and review the show inside of your Apple Podcast app on your phone or over on iTunes on your desktop. Thank you so much, and I'll catch you next time.